So this is a nest that I started building out of discarded studio materials in this building. I noticed that a lot of stuff was getting thrown away. I was working with birds. I was interested in what kind of nest somebody would build out of our sort of artist's environment. All this plastic came from somebody's project, the canvas, foam. So I lined it with all these little pieces of computer foam. I was spending more and more time in the studio, so it serves a pretty functional purpose. Much as I would imagine sort of an opportunistic bird building its nest, or a mouse maybe. Martin Cursell's built a nest that he called a Dionysian stage, which I think is kind of interesting idea of a nest being a place for sort of misbehavior, that it would be like a party nest or a love nest or something is pretty amusing to me. Our drive to improve things, to fix things, which is really central to most of my work. It is somehow innate to human behavior, or human psyche, to want to fix things that we perceive as broken. In the process, we tend to break a lot of things. I mean, this is a coconut that has basically evolved so that it's too heavy to float. The sole purpose of a coconut is that it's a floating seed. It goes from one island and uh, lands on another island and then spreads the plant. Well, this coconut's now stranded on two tiny little islands in the Seychelles off the coast of Africa. If these islands disappear, then we have formed this extinction, but in a very interesting way, the plant has sort of um, sort of locked itself into this corner, you know, and it obviously has a very biomorphic quality to it. It's very reminiscent of certain anatomical parts. And there's all this legend that's been built up around it. It's a, a fertility symbol. Sailors would haul these things out of the ocean and have their way with it. So it, there's some historical recreation in that and um, just exploring the whole story behind the love nut and sort of its unique relationship with humans. Zhu Bing, this Chinese artist, he collaborates with animals because they're um, close enough to us that we can be, um, that we have empathy with them, that we can somewhat relate to them as being like us, but they're also far enough, they're different enough that we can objectify them. By finding these human characteristics in something as simple as a plant in our thinking, uh, it really brings to question how unique humans are. I have this whole project that I'm putting together now for a show at Machines with Magnets that's um, dealing with how are we gonna save the love nut. And they're all pretty absurd propositions. A lot of what humans do is totally absurd. And a lot of it we just take for granted. But if it's sort of presented through this filter of animals, through this filter of plants or, you know, this natural world, then we sort of laugh at that absurdity and then maybe we're, we say, well, maybe this is really just about humans. One of the proposals that I would actually like to carry out in the years to come is to um, basically set myself adrift with a couple of these coconuts in the Indian Ocean and just sort of safeguard the, their passage. Although, with all the news about pirates in the Indian Ocean, that's become a much less appealing proposal. I'm in the glass department. It's really built on um, developing ideas first and then using materials appropriately. One of the great things about glass as a material is its ability to go anywhere from totally transparent to totally opaque. And I love that, that you can take it, you can reveal as much as you want or hide as much as you want. And uh, I think I take that into the rest of my work even when glass isn't around. I could think of four or five departments at RISD that I could be working in, but I specifically chose this one for the faculty and their interests, which are very diverse. It's hard to imagine being in another glass program. There aren't very many in the country that have this sort of approach. The glass department. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>